Okay, so it's time to bite the bullet and learn CSS Grid. If it's a thing you've been putting off for a long time, now is probably the time you should learn it and start implementing it into a project. Bootstrap 5 has just been released. It's dropped support for jQuery, for Internet Explorer, and has a flex-based grid system. And as a new project comes around, you're making a decision to use Bootstrap or some other library. And if you're only really using it for that 12 column grid, I'd suggest you might be better avoiding a library altogether and rolling your own CSS grid. No, get it off, get it off. So the important things to know about CSS grid are, it is easy to learn, it will immediately start proving useful in your projects. It isn't anything to do with tables and anyone who suggests it's similar to tables should be slapped. And I still think it's a lot better than the bootstrap offering. Despite moving away from float based systems, which were always a bit messy, you're still limited to working in that 12 column or 16 column layout, which you might not want to do. It might not suit the particular design. It's, it's limiting by technology. You're working with those percentage based layouts. You're still obviously required to download a big library, which you might not want to use all of its features. In fact, you probably will never use most of its features. The way you define that layout involves you having to write lots of classes for which different breakpoints and media queries you want different column widths to appear in certain ways. So you have to learn a whole bunch of settings and documentation. It's going to be harder to make edits in future because you're going to have to work within their system. You're also going to have to use cascade rules to beat the default bootstrap settings. And there's just a potential further down the line that you won't be able to create a solution that you want to because you've tied yourself to a bootstrap system. So here's a quick demonstration of the, the issues. If I make a bunch of boxes here, the traditional way is with floats, right? So you set float to everything. You can see straight away the container has fallen away because it's lost its position. Everything has to have a set uh, percentage width and then later on, we'd need to use like a clear float to retain some, some actual dimensions and so no content above it would fall behind. But there we go. If I need four columns and I want them to all have equal space, I've got to do that 100 divided by four equals 25. I've got to sit and do the maths myself. And Bootstrap used to just be this big set of classes that are all just hundreds and hundreds of percentage widths based on different number combinations. A load of bloat in your CSS. If you look at the Flexbox solution, so we'll do that again with, with some boxes. On the container this time, which makes life a little bit easier, we're going to set display to flex. And then on the individual items, I can set uh, flex one and they know to just fill the available space. That's helpful. Uh, or you can do like flex basis, uh, like 33%. So you can go with that set. And it means that you can uh, use different ratios to make one twice the width of the other ones. You can take up the available space. Flexbox is definitely a great solution. You're going to solve lots of problems about uh, centering and alignment. You're also going to be able to quite simply position elements on a page and not worry about how they're, they're going to sit alongside one another. Having elements all part of a, a flex system means that they have some context of one another and they can work well together. So unlike that float system where things might just randomly jump off a page because they're not really sure what they're supposed to be doing. But uh, I think Flexbox is probably a good solution for small groups of elements. Or if you're editing an existing system and you just want to fix an alignment solution, Flex does seem like a good go-to. But it does still have a looseness to it in which you're just defining numbers and you're just adding settings to make things jump around a page. There's less of a sense you're giving overall control. CSS Grid, which has still been massively uh, put off by people as this thing that you're going to have to get around to learning, is actually a lot simpler than people probably realize. Much like Flexbox on the container, we just set Display Grid. And now you've done it. You've created a grid. If the dev tools show you this dotted line around the outside, that's showing that these are now part of a grid, a single one column grid by default which makes sense on a mobile layout, you usually just want everything to fall into one column. And then you can add the setting grid, uh, template columns, which is a setting for how many columns. And here you just set a series of spaced values. So I can say 300 pixel space, uh, 200 pixel space, 100 pixel. And that's just made three columns. The first one would be 300, 200, 100. And you can combine those. So I can say, I want this one to be 20% of the screen width and I can sit and play with that 
or you can use that FR property, one FR, and that just means fill the available space. So here I can combine different units. I can use M's or I can use view widths. I can use percentages, pixels, or just available space. And I can completely fluidly make a design. There's also the ability to use min max. It means that things will restrict to a certain amount, but then they'll flow up and fill the available space. It means you can make completely fluid designs which don't require loads of media queries things will just naturally know which point to break into different rows and columns if you dive into it there's also the name convention so you can give named areas of a page and then you can just tell child elements which area they need to belong to there's just so much range of there's so just so much range on these things come on it just gives you so much control from a top level about dictating how a layout should work and how the elements are expected to behave within it. They also have a context so elements aren't going to accidentally overlap and fall into one another. With two lines of CSS we've been able to create a completely fluid grid system which in the past would have required all this extra work around it with percentages and clear floats and we know this will work and adapt as needed. And that's all you really need to get started. You can look at Wes Boss course which takes a few hours which will kind of go in more depth or you can find uh, the MDN docs for all the range, but really those two properties and uh, maybe some extra settings on rows will, will really quickly mean you can build anything you would have done in a bootstrap grid. So definitely worth checking out. But what do you think if, if you think Flexbox is still the best solution for all things or you're a big fan of the bootstrap system, let me know why. But uh, that's my view. Thanks a lot, man. Bye.